In this video, you're going to learn how to rationalize the denominator when you have a complex or imaginary number in that denominator. We're going to go through five examples together and you're going to get a handle on how to work with these problems. So let's dive into the first example. So we really don't want this i in the denominator. It's considered improper and we want to get rid of it. So how do we get rid of it? Well, there's two different cases. There's the case where you just have a monomial, meaning like one term or one group. And then there's the case where you have a binomial, two terms or two groups. The terms or groups are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So two different approaches. Now, when you have a monomial, what you can do is you can multiply the numerator and denominator just by i over i, because anything divided by itself is one. So we're really not changing the value of this fraction. We're just gonna change the form that it's in. So if we just multiply the numerators, three times i gives us three i. We multiply the denominators, 2i times 1i gives us 2i squared. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents, so 1 plus 1 is 2. And then i squared, you want to remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. So very important, i squared is negative 1. So we can replace 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And it, you can write this a couple different ways. You could just write it as negative 3 halves i, or you could write it as negative 3i over 2, or 3i over negative 2. I kind of like to write it like this. But the main thing is we've gotten rid of that i in the denominator, which is considered improper. So we're uh, rewriting it or rationalizing it. So for example number 2 now, we've got 5 divided by 2 minus i. Okay, so we don't want this i in the denominator. What we're going to do in this case when it's a binomial is we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate. Remember, when you work with complex numbers, complex numbers in standard form when it's in this a plus bi form. If we change that sign in between the real and the imaginary part, that's what we call the conjugate. So if this is 2 minus i, I'm going to multiply by 2 plus i. Of course, whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator because anything divided by itself is 1, and 1 times this fraction you know, won't change the value. It's just going to change the way that it looks. So now let's go ahead and multiply. So we've got 5 times 2, which is 10. I'm just distributing. 5 times i is 5i. Okay. In the denominator, we have to FOIL or do the distributive property twice. So we're going to take this 2. I'm going to distribute. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is 2i. A negative i times 2 is a negative 2i, and a negative i times a positive i is a negative i squared, because you have a negative times a positive is a negative, and then i times i, you add the exponents and get the i squared. But look what happens here. We've got a positive 2i and a negative 2i. Those cancel each other out. And we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, okay, but we have a negative times negative 1, that's a positive 1. So we have 4 plus 1 is 5, and there goes our i in the denominator. We were able to eliminate it, okay, or rewrite it. But you don't want to stop here, because when you write your final answer, you want to write it in the standard form of a complex number. That's this a plus bi form, where you separate the real part from the imaginary part. So the way you would do that is you would divide this into two fractions, okay, both of them divided by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1, i, or we could just say i. So 2 plus i, that's our final result. Okay, let's look at another example, number 3. So this one, same idea. We don't want this i in the denominator. It's considered improper. We want to rationalize it. But because it's a binomial, two terms, we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate. So the way we do that is we just, same two quantities here, but we just change the sign in between. Now, sometimes students make a little mistake. They, they make this like a negative 3 minus 2i. They like flip the signs on, on everything. You don't want to do that. You just want to change a sign that's in between. And the reason that works is because, just like we saw in this last example, the inner and the outer terms are going to cancel. One will be positive, one will be negative. And so it'll eliminate that i. That's what we're trying to do. So let's go ahead and continue here. So if we multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together. So we're going to distribute 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative 2i is negative 8i. Negative i times 3 is negative 3i. Negative i times negative 2i is a positive 2i squared. We have a negative times a negative is a positive. i times i is i squared. And then 1 times 2 gives you the 2. 
Okay, in the denominator now we've got 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative 2i is negative 6i. 2i times 3 is positive 6i. And 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Okay, now remember, i squared is equal to negative 1. So just a quick refresher, remember, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. But if I square both sides, the square and the square root, those undo each other, and that's how we get i squared equals negative 1. So let's see here, i squared is negative 1. So that's 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 12 is 10. Negative 8i minus 3i is negative 11i. You kind of think of i as a variable like x or y or z. You're just combining like terms. Here are the negative 6i and positive 6i cancel because one's negative, one's positive. This i squared is negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4 plus 9 is 13. Okay, now remember, you don't want to stop here. We want to rewrite it in the standard form, the a plus bi form, where the real and the imaginary are separate. And the way we do that is to split this up into two fractions with this common denominator here. So it would be 10 thirteenths minus 11 thirteenths i. You can put the i in the numerator off to the side. You just don't want it in the denominator. And that's your a plus bi form. Okay, let's take a look at two more examples. See if you can pause the video and do these last two examples on your own, and then we'll go through them together. See if you can work through example number four here. Now, what I would do here, I look at the denominator. I notice I have a binomial. I want to get rid of that i, so I'm going to multiply by the complex conjugate. So that's going to be 1 plus i. Remember, just change the sign in between the two terms. Whatever you multiply the denominator by, you want to multiply the numerator by, because that's like multiplying by 1. But you want to be careful here. Sometimes students make a mistake. They just multiply the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. But when you have a binomial times a binomial, you want to FOIL the first outer inner last acronym, or you can do distributive property twice. So 7 times 1 gives us 7. 7 times i gives us 7i. 5i times 1 gives us 5i. And 5i times 1i gives us 5i squared. And the denominator, same idea. Now, some students might say, Mario, my teacher just said that the inside and the outside cancel. Can I just do the first and the last? And you can. That's just a little shortcut once you realize that the negative i and the positive i are going to cancel. You could just do 1 times 1 is 1, and negative i times positive i is negative i squared. So a little bit of a quicker way of doing it. i squared is negative 1, and negative times a negative is plus 1. So 1 plus 1 would be 2. So our denominator is 2. This i squared is negative 1, so 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, plus 7 is 2, 7i plus 5i is 12i. We don't want to stop there, though. We want to split this up into two fractions, the real and the imaginary. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so we have 1 plus 6i is our final result. Okay, see if you can do this last example, number 5. This one, it's interesting, the 7 plus 5i was in the numerator. Now I put the 7 plus 5i in the denominator, but we still want to rationalize it. So while you're doing that problem, I just wanted to let you know that if you want some extra help learning about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or College Algebra, you can check out my video courses. I have links in the description below. So I've got two courses. Um, they're about 85 to 87 lessons each, and I take you through a typical Algebra 1 course or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra course We've got examples, we've got some teaching concepts, and some practice problems you can do on your, well, uh, on your own as well, and we go through those too. So it takes you through, you know, step by step. So check those out. Uh, and then let's finish this last problem here. So 7 plus 5i, we don't want that in the denominator, the i in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate. So we just change this from a positive to a negative. If this was negative, I'd make this positive. Whatever we do to the denominator, we want to do to the numerator. And now we just have to foil these out. So we've got 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times negative 5i is negative 20i. Negative 3i times 7 is negative 21i. And negative 3i times negative 5i is positive 15i squared. In the denominator, 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times negative 5i is negative 35i. 5i times 7 is positive 35i. See how those cancel. And 5i times negative 5i is negative 25i squared. i squared we know is negative 1. So negative 25 times negative 1 is positive 25. Plus 49 gives us 74. Uh, let's see here. This i squared is negative 1, so that's negative 15. Plus 28 is 13. 
negative 20i minus 21i is negative 41i. We don't want to stop there. We want to write it in the standard form of a complex number. So 13 over 74 minus 41 over 74i is our final result. So great job if you're able to follow these five examples. If you want to learn more about complex numbers, I've got a video that takes you through a lot of different types of problems with complex numbers. And I'll put that video right there. Follow me over to that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.